Team Group Dark Z Alpha is a high-performance DDR4 memory that features an armored aluminum heatsink design, comes with an overclocking profile, and is compatible with AMD's latest Ryzen processors. To learn more, check out the link in the video description. In September of 2013, almost seven years ago, I've built my FX8350 based system, and I must say it's been quite a journey. Over the years, I kept upgrading my PC with an aftermarket CPU cooler, a better motherboard for overclocking, more RAM, etc. to improve performance, and to be honest, I never expected I'd keep this PC for so long. I actually think it still performs just fine, especially if you also overclock it, though after nearly a decade of use, it was time for me to move on. As you most likely know, I recently upgraded to a Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which for me is a huge improvement, and of course, today we're going to be comparing both of these CPUs to see the performance uplift that we're getting. For the system specs, we have the Ryzen 5 1600 AF that is being cooled using the stock cooler, an MSI B350 PC mate motherboard, and 16GB of DDR4, 3200MHz memory. The FX8350, on the other hand, is paired with a Zalman CNPS 14X CPU cooler, a Gigabyte 990FXA UD3 Revision 4 motherboard, and 16GB of DDR3, 1866 MHz memory. Both systems are powered by a 700 watt FSP Hydro power supply, and for the graphics card we're using an overclocked GTX 970. For those of you wondering, the reason I'm using a stock cooler on the Ryzen system is simply because I currently don't have anything better that I could use. Please do keep in mind that the T-Force RAM that I have installed in the Ryzen system does not run at 3200MHz by default. You have to enable the XMP profile, meaning that for stock comparisons, it's going to be running at 2400MHz. Also, since the GTX 970 is not a very powerful graphics card, all the games were tested using lowest settings, at a resolution of 1600 by 900 to reduce the GPU bottleneck as much as possible, while also simulating performance of a higher-end graphics card at a higher resolution. Alright, let's begin with stock results, and starting off we have Cinebench R15, where the Ryzen processor is ahead in both single and multi-core tests by 54 and 87% respectively. Now, if you've seen my 1600 AF review, you've probably noticed that the score is slightly lower, and after hours and hours of figuring out, I realized that it is the motherboard. Previously, I tested the 1600 AF using the B350 Tomahawk, while the results for today's video were collected using the B350 PC Mate motherboard, and even though both are pretty much identical in terms of features, the Ryzen processor was boosting a little bit higher on all cores, using the Tomahawk motherboard for some reason. Using the BMW scene in Blender, the Ryzen processor is able to outperform the FX8350 by 56%, and using the Classroom scene, we're getting a similar uplift of 53%. Next up, we have Vegas Pro 14, and here we're seeing a 56% increase in render times over the 8-core FX processor. By the way, I've been getting comments from people claiming that it's a 4-core CPU with 8 threads, which is not true. The FX8350 does indeed have 8 cores. It's a complicated topic, so I'll probably make a separate video on that, of course, if you guys are interested. Next on the list is V-Ray, where the 1600 AF beats the FX8350 by a massive 93% margin. The Ryzen processor obviously also outperforms the FX CPU in Corona, where we see a 48% increase. We're also getting a 36% improvement using Intel Burn Test. And finally, the 1600 AF is 38 and 47% faster in compression and decompression workloads compared to the FX8350. Moving on to gaming results, let's begin with The Division 2, where the Ryzen 5 is performing 10 to 20 frames better, while also delivering slightly more consistent frame times. 
Next, we have Rainbow Six Siege, and by looking at this comparison using the built-in benchmark, you'd think that there is not much of a difference between the two. Unfortunately, using built-in benchmarks is not always a reliable way to test hardware, which seems to be the case here, because comparing these CPUs in what I consider to be a more realistic and intensive scenario, the 1600AF outperforms the FX8350 by 55 frames per second. That is a massive difference and something we would have no clue about if we just used the built-in benchmark. Next, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which has a much more usable built-in benchmark, and here the 1600AF has a roughly 15fps advantage over the FX8350, not to mention the noticeably better frame time performance. Now, it should be clear that at stock the FX8350 is going to get beaten by the Ryzen processor in every single task, so let's quickly have a look at the temperatures as well as power consumption and move on to our next comparison where we will overclock our FX processor just to see if it can catch up with the 1600 AF. Looking at temperatures, we obviously see the Ryzen processor running quite a bit hotter, and while comparing temperatures of these CPUs is absolutely irrelevant, at least we can have an idea whether the stock cooler with the pre-applied thermal paste is capable of keeping the processor cool, and the answer is yes, it does a pretty good job. Now, I do my testing outside the case with only one 120mm fan blowing onto the VRM heatsink, so if you use an aftermarket thermal paste and put your parts inside a properly ventilated chassis, I'm sure that temps on your 1600AF will be lower than what I have here. Finally, we have power consumption numbers, where the FX8350 consumes 52% more power at idle, 59% more using Intel Burn Test, and 29% more power while gaming. Okay, so for our next comparison, we're going to leave the Ryzen processor at stock, overclock the FX8350, and see how they compare. I got the FX8350 overclocked to 4.51 GHz using 1.46 volts. Both Northbridge as well as Hypertransport are set to 2420 MHz and the RAM is clocked at 2053 MHz. Looking at Cinebench R15 results, we can already tell that there is basically no way the FX8350 is catching up to the Ryzen processor, since the 1600AF is still ahead in both single and multi-core tests by 43 and 68% respectively. Not that you should expect the FX processor to catch up, there is a 6 year difference between Piledriver and Zen Plus architectures, but let's just see how it goes. Blender is next, where once again the 8-core processor has slightly closed the gap, though the Ryzen processor still has a massive lead of 51% using the BMW scene and 47% using the classroom scene. Looking at Vegas Pro 14 results, things don't get much better for the FX processor. Even if it had double the processing power, we'd still fall short of the Ryzen CPU by 2%, making the 1600AF 51% faster. Using V-Ray, we can see that the FX processor does get an 11% gain thanks to the overclock, yet the stock Ryzen 5 is still 74% faster. The rest should be obvious, so I'll leave the results here if you'd like to check them out. Overclocking does help the FX8350 get pretty close to the 1600AF in Division 2, though since we're mostly GPU bound in this title, I believe the Ryzen processor would pull ahead even further if we had a more powerful graphics card. Comparing these CPUs in Rainbow Six Siege, it looks like there is just no way the FX8350 is catching up with the Ryzen processor in this title, even if you overclock it to 5GHz, since the 1600AF is still 45 frames ahead. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is another title where the overclocked FX8350 does get pretty close to the 1600AF, falling behind by roughly 6-8 to eight frames, 
Though when it comes to frame time consistency, the Ryzen processor is the clear winner. Looking at player unknowns battlegrounds, we see the Ryzen processor performing around 10 to 12 frames better, and not only that, the game overall feels quite a bit smoother, which is especially noticeable when driving. As you can see, frame time spikes on the 1600AF aren't as frequent and prominent, making the gameplay experience more enjoyable. Next, we have Far Cry 5, where the Ryzen processor is roughly 20 frames ahead. The Ryzen 5 1600AF also delivers a higher frame rate in Call of Duty Warzone, performing around 15 to 20 frames better, while also providing a much smoother experience. For our final game, we have Battlefield 5, where once again the Ryzen processor is 15 to 20 frames ahead and delivers better frame time performance compared to the FX 8350. Like I said before, comparing temperatures is pointless in this situation, though for those of you who are curious, the FX8350 now maxes out at 69 degrees Celsius using Intel Burn Test, which is right under the stock 1600 AF using the out-of-the-box cooler. Looking at total system power consumption, the 8-core FX still consumes the same amount at idle as it did at stock, Though using Intel Burn Test, it consumes two and a half times more power compared to the 1600 AF, which is a 147% increase. The difference isn't as big while gaming, the FX processor consumes 50% more power, though it is still quite a bit. Just before we go ahead and overclock the Ryzen processor using the stock cooler, I'd like to quickly show you the amount of performance increase that you're getting by just simply enabling the XMP profile on these T-Force Darkseid Alpha sticks. Like I mentioned, by default, they're going to run at 2400 MHz, even though they're rated at 3200, and we don't want to be wasting that extra performance. Enabling the XMP profile is really simple. All you have to do is go into the overclocking tab of your BIOS, find the XMP option, in my case, it says a XMP, and select the highest frequency available. Now, if we compare the uplift to the default 2400 MHz in titles such as Rainbow Six Siege, PUBG, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we can see that we're actually getting a noticeable improvement. When it comes to software, we're also getting an increase across the board, and while the difference that we're seeing here isn't huge by any means, you will definitely notice it if you're working on larger projects that take hours to render. Personally, I also believe that these sticks have a really good design, and if we also consider the price that this memory is being sold at, I can confidently say that this is one of the best options out there. In case you're interested, I'll leave an Amazon link to this particular kit, and if you'd like to learn more, I'll also leave a link to Team Group's official website in the description down below. Alright, I don't want to make this video much longer than it already is, so let's finish this comparison by overclocking the Ryzen 5 1600 AF using this stock cooler and quickly comparing it to the FX 8350 in a few benchmarks. I got the Ryzen processor overclocked to 3.725 GHz at 1.265 volts, while the RAM is set to 3200 MHz using the XMP profile. Unfortunately, this is the maximum overclock I was able to achieve before getting thermally limited, which should be expected since we're overclocking 6 cores and 12 threads using the stock cooler. Looking at Cinebench R15, we now see the Ryzen processor outperforming the FX8350 in both single and multi-core tests by 47, and 80% respectively. The 1600 AF is also faster in Vegas Pro 14 by 55%, and when it comes to V-Ray, we have an 89% advantage compared to the FX processor. Talking about gaming, we're getting a pretty good improvement over stock on our Ryzen processor, 
And to be honest, I don't have much to say here. The 1600AF is unsurprisingly outperforming the FX8350 by at least 20 FPS in nearly every single title. The Division 2 is the only game where we got the smallest difference of 15 frames, though we also have a big improvement of 30 frames in Far Cry 5, with an even bigger one of 60 frames in Rainbow Six Siege, not to mention the noticeably smoother experience in some games. Overclocking the Ryzen processor using the out-of-the-box cooler does make it run quite hot, at least when rendering or using Intel Burn Test, meaning that temps aren't as much of an issue when playing games. Still though, I definitely recommend staying below 85 degrees Celsius under full load, so if you want to have a noticeable improvement by overclocking your 1600 AF while also maintaining a safe temperature, you might need to look for an aftermarket CPU cooler. While overclocking the Ryzen 5 1600 AF does slightly increase its power consumption, we are still nowhere near the FX 8350, which consumes 39% more power at idle, 91% more using Intel Burn Test, and 34% more power while gaming. I think we all knew what the results are going to be like. It was absolutely clear that the FX processor was going to perform worse in every single situation, yet it is still interesting to see how far AMD has come since 2012. I'm completely blown away by the improvement I got from upgrading to the 1600 AF. It is a night and day difference, though I can't deny that I also had a pretty good experience using my FX 8350. Like I said, even after all these years, I believe it is still a quite capable processor, and while some games may require a decent overclock, it should be able to run most modern stuff just fine. Either way, thank you guys for watching, feel free to check out more of my videos over here, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see y'all in the next one.